Hello and welcome to Inside History. I'm Susanna McClellan. During the opening months of World War II, a little-known story of the war took place right here in Palm Beach County at Lantana Airport. For 17 months, a group of volunteers serving in the Civil Air Patrol helped fight one of the biggest threats to America's safety. Let's recount this important part of history with Tony Marconi, who's the Society Curator of Education with the Historical Society of Palm Beach County. By 1940, the Florida National Guard, consisting of 4,000 strong men, had been called into service. Now this created a void, leaving virtually no one to respond to state emergencies, such as a U-boat attack. Many men and women of the Civil Air Patrol volunteered their time and resources to help protect our shores from the U-boat menace. By 1941, Germany was on its way to dominance in Europe and the Japanese were on the roll in the South Pacific. Here in the United States, American aviators were concerned that the military was not able to protect our shores should war come to the United States. Under the Office of Civilian Defense, several aviators had gathered together to create a plan to establish a national civil air patrol. By October of 1941, they had come up with a plan and they turned it into Fiorella LaGuardia, who was the director of the Office of Civilian Defense, he reviewed it, liked what he saw, and sent it to General Henry Hap Arnold, the commander of the Army Air Corps. Once Hap Arnold got it, he reviewed it and sent it to a board of Army officers to review. They replied to the general that they liked it. Once the Army Air Corps had approved it, Fiorella LaGuardia signed Administrative Order Number 9, establishing a Civil Air Patrol. On December 1, 1941, just six days before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the Civil Air Patrol was established, and the first air squadron was assimilated. After the United States was brought into war because of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the Civil Air Patrol went into full gear. Fiorella LaGuardia had appointed Captain Wright Vermilia as Florida Wing Commander for the Civil Air Patrol. His job was to establish Civil Air Patrol units in the state of Florida. After the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, the Germans didn't find out about that until that evening. Although they were allies, the Japanese had never warned the Germans that they were going to make that attack. Had the Germans known, they probably would have arranged for their own attack along our east coast. So what they did was that in January 1942, they launched Operation Pockenschlag, that's Operation Drumbeat. What they did is they sent a group of U-boats across the Atlantic to attack the eastern seaboard of the United States. Their mission was to attack any Allied shipping along our coastline. We were caught unprepared for that. We should have learned from World War I because they did the exact same thing in 1918. So we were caught unprepared. During the first six months of Operation Pockenschlag along the U.S. East Coast, approximately 397 ships were sunk with a combined weight totaling over two million tons and the loss of about 5,000 lives. The Germans lost 302 men and seven U-boats. The Navy was not prepared to combat the U-boat menace. Shipping companies were screaming for help from the military. So what they did is they turned to the Civil Air Patrol and they authorized the Civil Air Patrol to establish three 90-day experimental bases. In March of 1942, the first two bases were established in the Northeast at Atlantic City, New Jersey and Rehoboth, Delaware. The third base was established right here in West Palm Beach. They began operations at the beginning of April of 1942. They would fly from sunrise to sunset from West Palm Beach to Cape Canaveral and back. They would fly out to 60 miles out over the ocean searching for U-boats, ships in distress, and survivors.
Within that first 90 days, these three bases were such a success at spotting U-boats and guiding rescue ships to sinking ships and survivors that the Civil Air Patrol authorized 18 additional Coast Patrol bases. So by the middle of 1942, they had 21 bases stretching from Maine all the way to the Texas-Mexican border. Now, Coast Patrol 3, they operated from Morrison Field, which had been taken over by the Army Air Corps. The Army Air Corps moved in in 1941. They established the Air Transport Command. So the Civil Air Patrol had just a little piece of that base. By May of 42, the Army Air Corps activity had increased so much that Coast Patrol 3 had to pick up and move literally overnight to Lantana Airport, about seven miles south of Morrison Field. The number of military bases in Florida increased from 8 in 1940 to 172 in 1943. Many of the men and women who served with Coastal Patrol Base 3 went on to serve in the military in Europe and the South Pacific. With the creation of the Civil Air Patrol, a large number of civilian pilots and aviation enthusiasts used their skills in private light planes to defend our shores. The men and women that made up Coast Patrol 3 came from a wide variety of backgrounds. You had common people with businesses working right here all the way to the rich. Uh, remember uh, Jimmy Donahue of the Woolworth Fortune. He flew in Coast Patrol 3. We had county commissioners. John Prince and Cecil Cornelius who also flew. We had the mayor of West Palm Beach, Willis Hitt who also flew missions. Between February and May of 1942, about 16 ships were sunk or damaged between Cape Canaveral and Miami. Coast Patrol 3 saw many of those ships and they saved quite a few survivors by directing the military and the Coast Guard to the locations of those survivors. Though Coast Patrol 3 spotted U-boats, they had nothing to attack with. They had to rely on the response of the military. In May 1942, one incident occurred up at Cape Canaveral. Doc Rinker, who owned Rinker Materials here in Palm Beach County, and his co-pilot or observer, Tom Manning, spotted a U-boat at Cape Canaveral. The U-boat got scared when they saw their aircraft, and when trying to get away, they rammed themselves up on top of a sandbar. So for an hour, Doc Rinker was circling that U-boat, calling for aid from the military to come and kill this U-boat. Perfect target to kill. In the meantime, the U-boat was able to work itself off that sandbar and escape to deep water. The military never showed up. They were upset, and when they got back to Lantana, they complained to Wright Vermilia, who happened to know Hap Arnold personally. Vermilia picked up the phone, called Hap Arnold, and told him what had happened. Told him about the one that got away. Arnold ordered that all Coast Patrol planes be armed with bombs or depth charges. 